In this video, I'll show you how to create a neon glow effect in Affinity. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link to the photo that I'll be using in the video description. We're going to create this glow effect in two steps. First, we'll make the photo look like it's nighttime, and then we'll make the sign glow. So let's start by making the photo look like night. To begin, I'll go to our adjustments and I'll apply a curves adjustment. An easy way to make the photo look darker is lowering the white point. This will make all of the white areas in the photo look darker. So I'll start by pulling this down and you can see that's already making a pretty good difference. I can also bring the black point over to make it darker too. And then we can lower this whole spline to make it even darker. I'll close out of this. And now we can add the next adjustment. I'm going to add the white balance adjustment. I'm going to make the photo look more blue, more cool toned to make it look more like night. I think this looks pretty good, so I'll close out of this. And at this point, I think this looks pretty good for most of the picture, but the sky is visible in this picture, and it's obvious that it's not a dark night sky. So to fix this, we can paint over this area. I'll add a new pixel layer, and we can paint on this layer. So let's grab the paintbrush. I'm just going to make sure my hardness is all the way down. And I'll lower the flow a little bit just to gradually add black paint to this area. I'll adjust the size of my brush using the bracket keys on my keyboard. And then I'll paint over this area. That's too much paint, so I'll press Command or Control Z to undo. And I'll lower the flow even more. That's better. So just paint over anywhere where you can see the light sky. And you can see that while this covers up the sky, it's also darkening the trees, which doesn't look very natural. So to fix this, we can use Blend Ranges, which you can find by clicking on this gear icon. Using blend ranges, we can decide if this layer is affecting the shadows or highlight areas. I want this to affect the highlight side so that the bright sky becomes darker. But I'm going to lower the shadow node to remove a little bit from the dark trees. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll close out of this. And now you can see we have this dark night sky and the rest of the photo looks nice and dark. As one last step to make this look like night, I'm going to add noise to this picture. Dark photos naturally have noise, so this will really help to sell the effect. I'll go to the filters and I'll apply the add noise filter. Then I'll zoom in so I can see this better. Now, before I move this slider, you can see that this has been applied as a child layer to our painted layer. So go ahead and click and drag to bring this on top of everything. And now we can adjust this slider to add noise. Now, I don't want to add too much noise, just enough to make this look like a natural nighttime photo. So I think I'll just raise this a little bit. And now you can see the before and after of that noise. With all of that, I'm going to hold shift to select all four of these layers so that we can see the before and after of making this photo look like night. This is such a great start. Even if you don't want to make anything glow, I think making a photo look like nighttime is a pretty cool effect. So now it's time to make the sign glow, starting with the neon sign that says ice cream. 
To do this, I'm going to grab the pen tool and then I'll zoom in. I have all of my layers selected right now, so I'm just going to click outside of them. And then we can trace around this sign using the pen tool. But first, I need to change a setting. First, I'm going to click on the gear icon right here. And then I'm going to go to the very bottom to turn on rubber band mode. With rubber band mode on, it's a lot easier to see how your next point is going to affect the line that you're making. I'm going to start by clicking and dragging to lay down my first point, and then you can see this line, which is helping you visualize your next point. I'll click and drag for the next point, and you can see I'm just following the curve of the neon sign. By default, this gives us a fill color and a stroke color, but I find these colors distracting as I'm tracing, so I'm going to click on this button to remove the fill, and then remove the stroke. And then I'll continue, tracing right along the edge, laying down points every once in a while to make sure I'm on the right path, and then I'll click and drag wherever there's a curve. One useful shortcut to know is holding Alt or Option to create a sharp corner. So right here, I'll click and drag on this corner. You can see the left part of our line looks good, but I'll hold Alt or Option to break this node, and I'll put this handle facing the next direction. So you can see now we have this nice, sharp little turn right here by holding Alt or Option. Again, we have a sharp corner right here, so I'll click and drag, and then I'll hold Alt or Option to move the handle in the next direction. Then I'll lift up on my cursor, and I'll continue to click and drag to trace the sign. Remember, you can press Command or Control Z at any time to undo your points. I know this video has a lot of the pen tool in it, but I think practicing the pen tool is always a good thing. You never know when you're going to need it for a project. I just finished the first word, so I just want to show you that my next step after I'm done tracing is I'm going to go back to the color panel and I'll click on the fill color, and then I'll make the fill color white. Then I'll move on to the other side, and I'll continue tracing around. But again, I find the fill color distracting as I'm tracing, so I'm going to turn off the fill color again. Take as much time as you need tracing around these letters, I know I'm making it look very fast because I sped up this video, but it does take a little bit of patience to lay down all of these points. So take your time, relax, and enjoy the process. I forgot to mention that if the snapping lines ever come up and annoy you as you're tracing, you can turn off snapping at the top of the screen at any time to remove those snapping lines. Once again, since I finished this part of the tracing, I'm going to make the fill color white, and then I'll continue with the last part of the word. Once again, I'll remove this fill color, and I'll continue. So I just finished the last part of the word, but you can see that my points aren't lining up properly right here. It juts out a little strangely. If you have any points after you finish tracing that you want to adjust, you can click on the little arrow next to the pen tool to select the node tool, and then you can adjust the handles of any of these nodes to adjust how the curves look. That looks better. So feel free to go all the way around your design, fixing any nodes that need it. I think my nodes are looking pretty good now, so I'm just going to fill this with white. And now we can zoom out and take a look at our work. 
Now this looks pretty good, but you may have noticed that we actually have a cutout right here that we need to remove. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you how to do that. First, let's turn off this layer so that we can see what should be cut out. Then I'm going to select the pen tool again, and I'm just going to trace around the area. So I'll click and drag for my first point. I'll hold Alt or Option to change direction of the sharp node right there. And then I'll continue to trace all the way around. Okay, now that that's cut out, we can fill it with any color. It doesn't really matter. And then I'll turn on the rest of the letters. So now we have two layers, the cutout layer and the white letter trace layer. To cut the red part out, I'm going to go to the Vector Studio. Then I'll hold Shift to select both of the layers. And then up at the very top, we can use the Shape Builder options to subtract. So I'll click on the second option, and this will cut out that first layer from the second layer. So you can see now we have this perfectly cut out. I'll go back to the Pixel Studio now. And now that we have all of these letters traced, I'm going to hold Shift to select all of the traced letter layers, and I'll group them together with Command or Control G. I want them grouped together so that we can add a few effects to the entire group. First, I'm going to add a blur filter so that this all looks softer. To do that, I'll go to the filters, and then I'll apply a Gaussian blur. I'll increase the radius to give this a softer edge. Then with the group selected, I'm going to go to the layer effects, and I'm going to add an outer glow to these letters. So I'll increase the radius of the glow, and I'll also adjust the intensity a little bit. And then we can choose the color of the neon. So click on color right here. And I want this to have a nice warm glow, so I'm going to change the color to a nice gold color. I'll click outside of this to close this up, and then I'll close out of the dialog box. And now you can see what this looks like so far. I think this looks really pretty. So with the sign looking nice, I think it also makes sense to light up all of these little light bulbs right here. So let's do that next. Most of the light bulbs are circles, which will make it very easy in a moment, but these first two are shaped a little oddly, so I'm going to grab the pen tool so that we can manually trace them. You can see I can't really see underneath the fill color, and this is why I like to turn it off at the start of all of my tracing. I just wanted to show you how it can get in the way if you leave it on. So I'll turn this off, and now you can see this should curve inward just a little before you finish the shape. I'm going to fill this with a white fill color, and then I'll trace this other light bulb. I'll fill this with white, and now for the rest of the light bulbs, I'm going to go to our shape tools, and I'll click on the little arrow, and then I'll select the ellipse tool. Then I'll just click and drag to trace a circle around all of these light bulbs, adjusting the edges to make sure it fits perfectly. These aren't perfect circles, so make sure you adjust the edges so that they line up nicely. So I'll just do that going all the way across. With that finished, I'm going to select all of these layers. So I'll click on the first layer, I'll scroll down, and then I'll hold shift to click on the last light bulb layer, and I'll group them with command or control G. 
Now with this group selected, I can apply the same effects that I did to the other group. So first, let's go to the filters, and let's apply the Gaussian Blur filter, and I'll raise the radius just a little bit to blur the light bulbs. Then as a quick little trick, I'm going to steal the layer effects from the ice cream group by clicking and dragging on this FX and placing it on the group. This looks so good! To finish this project, I like to paint a little extra light on the surrounding areas. So to do this, I'll add a new pixel layer. Then I'll grab the paintbrush tool. Making sure we still have a nice low flow, I might lower it even more. And first, I'm just going to paint in white paint. So with a nice large brush, I'm just going to paint over the area. This is giving a bit of a ghostly glow. It doesn't look very natural, but we can change the blend mode of this layer right up here. And I'll just change this to the soft light blend mode. Here's the before and after, adding a little bit of light. And we can repeat this process as many times as we want. I think I'll just do it one more time, this time using a gold paint. So I'll change the fill color to that gold color. And then I'll paint this over the area, adding a little extra warmth. And then I'll change the blend mode of this layer. You can use soft light or overlay. They work pretty similarly. And for this one, I think overlay looks a little bit better. So with that, I'll hold shift to select both of these painted layers. And you can see the difference this has made before and after. That looks so good! Okay, I'm going to select all of our layers now, other than the photo layer, so that you can see the complete before and after. And just like that, we've made the ice cream sign glow. This looks so cool! If you enjoyed this video, I'll leave a link in the video description to my free affinity course. In the course, you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.